How's it going everyone? It's Mike the Gardener. So this is going to be a quick update. I'm going to do the entire garden as quickly as possible. I'm sorry I haven't posted a video. I just lost track of time. But there's enough changes to warrant another video. So uh, I want to give you guys an update. So the blueberry bushes um, are doing roughly the same. You can see that this garden is kind of overrun with weeds. At this point, it's kind of been forgotten. Uh, we haven't been eating as much kale or lettuce as we thought we would. And so, you know, it's just kind of a lost cause. Uh, maybe at some point we'll uh, give this part of the garden the care it deserves. But for now, we just water it and fertilize it. And it's kind of been forgotten. The blueberry bush that isn't doing well is still not doing well. And there are a few blueberries that are ripening not there yet but for the most part that's not the important part of the garden at this point um i guess i'm going to try to do this quickly because the sun's going down it's about 8 20 p.m uh, one thing that i wanted to point out was at at one point recently there were a bunch of these pepper plants that weren't doing so well so this is the lemon drops. These are the four lemon drops. And you can see that they've all recovered. Uh, they were yellowing and stuff, but now they're fine. And then these eight right here, starting here, and then these eight are the jalapenos. And even the two that weren't doing very well, uh, especially well, you can see that there's plenty of dark green growth. Uh, and basically what we did was we stopped watering uh, and just let the, you know, we get thunderstorms here pretty much every day for like 30 minutes to an hour, sometime in the afternoon into the evening. And so peppers tend to like dry. So we just let the rain take care of them. And if they start to wilt a little bit, for example, today they started to wilt a little bit, but then we had a good hour thunderstorm. So we just don't need to water. Uh, and you know in two or three days if it hasn't rained and they start to wilt we'll water so Over on this side, so we have uh, as I mentioned the jalapenos and then these are the habaneros So the two closest to me are still the biggest um, I think that maybe they get a little bit more Sun and Then moving around This is the lemon drop that got eaten and this is the biggest plant overall. It's doing super well and then this is the ghost that also got eaten. It was sitting right there, but we had to move it around here. I think the deer got to it. And then these are the super hot. So the first four right here are reapers and then scorpions and then ghosts. And then at the end is the cayennes. So these are the serranos that were doing super well before. There's still like five or six that are just about to start ripening. And then those are chocolate habaneros. And then this is the top Serrano that's also doing really well. Um, and then I, as I move around here, you can see that these are starting to get big and they're starting to like, they say they get into a Y as they get bigger. And you can see here that this is one of the ghosts and it just got into a Y and it's starting to flower. And there's actually a couple of pods on there. And then this is a tie. You can see a little bit of uh, foliage damage. So there's some different kinds of aphids and caterpillars that are in this pepper garden at this point and I'm trying to deal with them as best I can. I'm spraying neem oil and BT every time it rains so it rained today so I'll do that tomorrow um, and then this is a cayenne and this is a Thai and it's the same thing just a little bit of leaf damage from them being eaten but you can see these are the cayennes down here there's a bunch of pods on top so everything's doing pretty well in the pepper garden as it's been getting hotter and drier uh, and the fertilizer has been applied every 10 days. They've really responded well. So moving into the main garden. So these are the six plants that were the extra heirlooms and all of them have basically doubled since the last video. Um, they all have fruit except this one, which I don't even know what kind it is, honestly. Oh wait, it has fruit now. So they all have fruit. 
Um, this one I think I had said was a mortgage lifter. You can see based on the shape of the tomato, that's a San Marzano. I had thought that I lost all my San Marzanos, but obviously I didn't. And then my container tomato is doing well. It's a yellow pear. There's a little bit of disease and leaf spot, but you can see there's, you know, plenty of tomatoes all over the plant. Uh, some of them are getting to be ripe. And then the tomato hedge down the back fence is starting to get pretty big as well. It's, you know, maybe three to four feet tall in certain spots. And then down here, the it's kind of growing along the ground. Uh, the squash plants, honestly, the squash plants aren't doing the best. Um, I've noticed when I'm out here during the day, the pollinators basically ignore the squash plants and only pollinate the tomatoes and the cucumbers and we were talking about next year not even doing the squash because really it's a huge amount of space you could put eight tomato plants in the space that the squash are taking up and heirloom tomatoes are just way better than squash and also you can just get squash at the grocery store whereas you you know you can't get a vine ripened heirloom tomato at the grocery store um, and then the herbs the herbs are kind of struggling they got really dried out they basically dry out in a day because you know there's like 64 plants in these three small beds so there's a ton of roots um, and it, we went three or four days without watering my new philosophy is water as little as possible but you all you actually do have to water the herbs so you can see down here, for example, the cilantro is really struggling. It actually could probably die. And that's because it didn't get watered for three days. But honestly, cilantro isn't that good. So it's not the biggest loss. Mainly we use the oregano, thyme, parsley, basil, and rosemary. That's why there, there's more of those plants. And then this is, there. you know, there's five different herbs in here. There's uh, mint, sage, cilantro chives and dill so who cares really um and then i guess the last thing are the tomatoes and cucumbers so starting down here you can see that the romas have more disease in them than you'll see it in the rest of the tomatoes and that's really just because they're the the, the, the if i could speak they're the determinant types so you know they don't need to survive they just need to set their fruit and then die off so you can see that there's a good number of tomatoes on all of these plants. You know, maybe 15 to 20. And there's even some ripening, right? There's a couple ripening. Oh, my neighbor's dog's in my backyard, probably pooping. There she is. She's a good girl, though. Um, okay, moving on to the regular tomatoes. So these are the mortgage lifters slash delicious, and they're the most diseased. I have to keep pruning them further and further and further. You can see there's leaf spot and, uh, you know, other places there's been early blight, but they're still producing tomatoes. And this one's like six feet tall now. And then these are the Cherokee purples, and they kind of stop growing upwards, but they're chock full of tomatoes. And then the Super 100s are doing exactly as you would expect a Super 100 to do. They're getting really tall, kind of almost like a vine, producing a ton of fruit. And then back there, the tallest plants you see are the Emerald Evergreens. And they're huge, tons of tomatoes in there. And then I guess the last thing I want to point out is this is supposed to be a yellow pear. And you can see... It's just full of big tomatoes. So this is gonna be uh, another evergreen emerald. There's one little, let's see if I can, okay. Just one leaf got pinched up in there. Pull that out of there. Um, but yeah, you can see, you know, the squash plants. Oh, we went out of focus, okay. The squash plants are just taking up a ton of space. A lot of them aren't getting pollinated, so they're rotting on the vine. And then the last few plants are these four pepper plants. 
these were from the extra peppers and I found some pots. And then I guess there's these two as well. These are both lemon drops. And I do just wanna say this plant was, you can see where I topped it, right? Uh, if it would focus, I can't, I don't have three hands. There you go. It started with one leaf, that first leaf near the top spot. And this entire plant grew out of that one leaf. Um, so if you guys are wondering, is my pepper gonna die? Probably not. Um, peppers are super hardy. Okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about is you can see on the other side of the fence, there's this area of brown. So if you look down in there, that's what the fence was starting to look like. Uh, and we went over and cleaned it out. They don't cut that part of the vine when they mow, that's a school over there. And the reason that they don't is because there are these stumps and so they can't, you know, it would damage their mower. They use like a big tractor when they mow. And so we went over there and cleared it out and you can see, you know, basically all of these plants down the edge of the garden are getting, you know, an extra like four hours of sun now because they're not getting blocked from the vines. And that's only something that we have to do like once every two or three years. Um, but it basically was necessary at this point. And then the last update is the cucumbers. So we harvested a whole bunch of the pickling cucumbers down on this end. And there's a whole bunch more in there that I'm about to harvest as soon as I finish this video. And then on this side, this is the straight eight cucumbers. So you can see, for example, right here, there's one growing into the fence and then uh, there's one right there that's almost ready. So those are a couple weeks. I would say the pickling cucumbers are like two or three weeks ahead of the straight eights. So the straight eights are about to be ready um, and the pickling cucumbers are actually kind of starting to die back. There's plenty of flowers still on them on both, uh, both varieties. But the, if you look in the bottoms of the, the, the pickling cucumbers are doing so well. All right, so this is a garden update. Um, I'll probably post something sooner than I have been. I do want to talk about disease prevention and, you know, getting into the specifics of why we're doing what we're doing with the tomatoes. So I'll probably put something up, you know, in a few days or in a week. And then um, if there's anything interesting, I will make a garden update. Um, otherwise, I don't really see myself making a garden update until there's, you know, something significant enough where I can say, wow, it's worth doing a garden update. Like, for example, you know, there's a tomato plant right there in the middle of the screen right now that's, you know, seven feet tall. And these were only, you know, two feet tall when we started this, uh, in the last, you know, the last video. Um, but now they're four or five feet tall and we've harvested a bunch of stuff. So all in all, um, you know, the original plan was to do weekly garden updates, but I don't really think that's necessary. So here's an example. You can see this plant has not necessarily been pruned properly, right? And because there's a sucker here and a sucker here. And so, I mean, I guess I could pinch them off, but at the same time, this plant's like six feet tall. So at this point, it's like, I'm just gonna tie everything back and let it do its thing and get as many tomatoes as I can. So this has been a garden update. Everything's getting huge now. And I guess the goal is to prevent diseases and make sure we get as much out of these plants for as long as we can into July and August. All right, I'll see you guys soon, and thanks for watching.